This is Adventures in Voice Acting, inside the Voice Actor Studio, and we have a great guest today. And I just want this is all part of Adventures in Voice Acting, which is a, uh, a, a thing that the Bankton started quite, quite a while ago with a documentary, which is fantastic. If you haven't seen it, it's wonderful. And in order to answer questions about how you get into voice acting, they serve as mentors in voice acting. There are workshops and stuff that we do, and you can go find out all about that down at the Bang Zoom booth, um, uh, down on the convention floor. There's also people walking around, they'll be in the back um, when you're leaving. If you want to sign up and get some information, they'll be there for you. So, okay? Let's get started, all right? Yeah. Okay, we have a great guest. This is wonderful. Um, she, uh, a couple years ago, won a, a BTVA award for Outstanding Voice Actress of the Year. Uh, also won for outstanding performance in, in, a, in an anime. Um, she's, uh, she does live action, she's on camera, she's uh, done shows like I can't read without my glasses. Hang on, old eyes. We've got uh, Capellia, Natalia, Maggie, the Kingdom of Magic, Owen Horn High School Post Club, Panty and Stocking with Garter Belt, Sergeant Frog, and now as Sailor Venus and Sailor Moon. Let's take a little bit of a look at. Uh, and a little bit of a video about it. I just wanted to be on Barney as a child, that's where my journey began. 
Um, that did not happen, but I, <laughs> but I ended up working in film and TV and uh, doing a lot of commercials. And then I had an agent uh, in the adult division of uh, voiceover for one of the biggest voiceover agencies in Dallas. And she came to my uh, kid agent and said, I need a kid who sounds like she's three or four but can read really well because we have uh, it was a campaign for 7-Eleven and they needed a kid to talk about all of the magical ways that a Slurpee is made. <laughs> and there's all these underground tunnels and so I was seven they put me in a, a closet at the studio. Um, and I auditioned since then and then I was doing voiceover at different studios um, like every week. So were you, were, I mean, when you got into it when you were very young, was yeah. it just something you tripped into or something you really, it came from the heart? It was something that I kind of fell into um, because I didn't understand the cartoons, that, that there were voices behind them at five. I just felt like, oh, this is magical money books. They all talk. Okay. <laughs> uh, but then as I started figuring out, I got older and I was doing voiceover commercials. And then I started watching animation in a very different way going, okay, those are actors. I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna be a cartoon character. Uh, and that's when I started doing like voiceover shows. I had like a weekly uh, show that I was working for, uh, Paws and Tales, and it aired every week, we had a different episode. And then they decided they wanted to animate it. So then we had them videotaping us and animating after. And I only started getting into dubbing work when I was 18 and auditioned at Funimation. Okay, so yeah. you have a favorite over there. Yeah. <laughs> so you've done some, some pretty, do you prefer um, uh, comedy, or you've done a nice mix of both comedy and very serious heavy drama, yeah. and you do both well, both of them well. Yeah. You have a preference? Um, it's always fun to do comedy because it's always fun to make people laugh. But I guess in some uh, in some way, I love getting to connect with the character and kind of go through that emotional. Uh, I feel with, with drama, if it's a huge emotional scene, it's a catalyst, and the reason someone's crying is because they're breaking through a barrier, and it's really nice to go through that through someone else. So even things that you're afraid to talk about or afraid to discover with yourself, you can go through with an animated character, character or any character. So it's nice to kind of break those barriers and I have found I've learned a lot of things about myself from the characters I've worked on, which happens a lot with drama, sometimes with comedy. Uh, normally the things I learn with comedy is, wow, I'm super awkward and I'm okay with it. So that's, <laughs> So what led you, it, 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 it was it just the natural progression that led you into on camera and live action? Did you go to theater first or did you just kind of move into that? I, uh, I had harassed my mom for years <laughs> saying that I wanted to be an actor. Um, and I was doing like Tide commercials in the bathtub as a kid. Um, and my mom said, I, I, my mom was an actor as a kid and said, I don't want you doing it, it's a really hard business. And I said, no, this is what I'm supposed to do. So she took me to an open call for Miracle on 34th Street. And I stood in line all day, auditioned like 15 times. They kept sending me into rooms. And uh, finally the producer said, so she's in the top 10. We're sending the top 10 out to LA. She says she's in that major, and I'm assuming she's just young and doesn't understand. My mom's like, no, she, she's in that major. And he said, well, we can't take somebody that doesn't have an agent. We're moving fast on this. And so uh, I said, see, I gotta get an agent. And um, <laughs> so I ended up meeting with an agent and I started doing on-camera work first. I had taken acting classes, commercial classes, uh, some theater, but I actually did theater later. I did theater in middle school and high school. So I was doing on-camera work first. Does that, does the, the, the theater work you did and all that inform your characters now? Is 100%. that something that you get pulled in house of? Yeah, um, I think when I'm doing film work, um, it's all about, the most realistic as possible. Sometimes you feel like you're not doing enough. I had an acting teacher that says, if you're just talking and reacting and you feel like you're not doing anything in the scene, that means you're doing the best work possible because it's honest. For theater and for voiceover, uh, your imagination is as far as the character can go. You can play whatever character possible. I mean, in high school, um, if you're doing one act play or anything like that, you're getting really needy roles. And I was playing like a mother to two grown men, one of which died in, in war, and I was 17. <laughs> so it was just about what I was able to emotionally carry or go and go through and you take more risks that way. If on camera, if the character is 17 and you're 12, you're not gonna get cast in the job. Uh, but with, with voiceover, as you can see, I was playing like a five-year-old when I was 22. You actually can kind of reach levels that only dogs can hear with your yes. voice, you know, so. <laughs> Because I would just jump in and start saying things like that. They will have no idea. I'll be talking to them normally, and then, you know, a crazy little child. So you break out in the voices? Yeah, sometimes. 
and, and I have a really cool family and a really cool husband that they will do voices with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my family just looks like I'm crazy. Um, cool. So you've done, <laughs> you've done some uh, pretty interesting stuff. Tell me a little bit about your time on Natalia in terms of you know, what you have to do for that while. I mean, there's, there's accents. There's, there's a, a lot there's a of accents. Yeah. And um, I found that Liechtenstein is a very, very big name for a very tiny country and a very little person. Um, <laughs> and when I was auditioning for that show, I didn't know what an accent for Liechtenstein sounded like. And uh, neither did the director. So we had this fantastic website where it was the same line that they had all of these people from all over the world read. And you picked the region of which country you could hear all the accents and find which accent you wanted to stick it. Liechtenstein had, uh, I think, between 12 and 15 accents that sounded completely different because each region just picked up the accent of the more dominant surrounding country or area. Um, so, so that was, was it tough to learn? It was really difficult, and we kind of did a hybrid. Uh, because I said, you're doing the worst thing to me. I'm going to go to a convention. Italia has a huge fan base, and they're going to kill me because they're going to say, no, it's not from that region. We thought of Liechtenstein as that one region that you didn't represent with your voice. So we took little pieces and little vowel sounds that we thought were most prominent and then created that voice. So it's like the United Voices of Liechtenstein. <laughs>